Good morning. Welcome to the Parenting Versus Podcast. Podcast. Um, Saturday morning, we're drinking coffee. We're drinking coffee. I'm on cup two. Oh, here come the noises. Excuse you. Just kidding. It was a chair. I have to be close to you. You say that every time. Well, I have to because we we're recording into a microphone. I know. I hear the background music still mm. going in the <laughs> in the living room. Or the intro music, rather. Um, it's a beautiful day. Yeah. In the neighborhood. Mm. And um, let me just lay out the scene for you right now. We're looking at a dead yard. <laughs> it's not dead. It looks dead. There's part of it that's been irrigated. Yeah. Um, our waiting pool has been punctured and is, like, sadly flopping over. I can see it. <laughs> I'm here. Um, so. I don't know, like, why I even bother. <laughs> so. You've been podcasting all week. Uh huh. You and your brother have a, have a thing. It's a side project. It's been pretty successful, right? I mean, we'll see when it all comes down to it. Um, I mean, the interviews have been. So from what you have yeah. done, have been really cool, right? Yeah, it's, um, you mind if I plug for a second? No, that's it's, why I brought it up. <laughs> it's called What's Up Baby Q. Um, it's a local podcast about um, the different things that make Albuquerque good. And we're going around town and interviewing lots of different local businesses and business people. Um, so I've been doing like averaging like two interviews a day, <laughs> which doesn't seem like a lot, but like mentally it's pretty intense. And then Well it sounds like you guys have It's fun though. Yeah. It's so much fun. <laughs> but you have a lot of material to release for the next couple months like already. Yeah, we're trying to book out six months. Um an, we've ep- interviewed, an episode a week. Yeah, one a week. So it'll be on Tuesdays. We've interviewed some really cool people. Um we interviewed this guy that has a chicken restaurant and he like made us this like chicken with this like sauce that's like his own invention and it's like his grandma's um recipe they're from laos so that was really cool he's like here try this chicken (laughs) and then we interviewed a crossfit guy that runs a crossfit business here in town and he gave us like three free sessions of crossfit haven't tried it yet because i'm terrified probably will though um (laughs) went to a coffee roastery yesterday and drank so much coffee but got to see the whole process. It was really fun. So wait, did they have, at Red Rock, did they have, like, a place where they where they ground the coffee and made the coffee and, like, tried it and stuff? Like, they have a... Yeah, it's a family-owned business. I'm just going to plug them because they're amazing people. Shout um, out. Shout out Red Rock Roasters. They're local That's here. That's funny. Like, the podcast with your brother is, like, just a shout out mm-hmm. podcast, which is cool. Well, the cool thing is they are interested in sponsoring some of our podcasts. Um, so we're talking about that, but, um, yeah, the main roaster's like 30. She grew up in this family and the dad went to school in Italy Hmm. and he worked on machinery. Hmm. Um, and so they came back to Albuquerque and like originally started roasting coffee in like a barn (laughs) in Corrales. And then it kind of graduated. They've been here for 26 years this year. And so they have like a really cool retail spot with a really nice, like, place to sit and try coffee coffee <laughs> do they have a do they have an actual coffee shop no they don't um but you can go in and you can, they always have something you can try so like we went in and like she she put on a sumatra for us and we got to try that um, i think they just distribute to restaurants right nope you can buy it no i know you can buy it but like that's their main gig is like providing that, bulk beans to 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 restaurants partially um you can also go in and just buy it like if you wanted to buy a pound for your family you can just walk in and buy it when we had our little Mm -mm. coffee shop we didn't use red rock we used somebody out of santa fe Uh, it was called aroma oh yeah i remember now well cool that's awesome i learned a lot about coffee so (laughs) very cool yeah so and then we have a couple interviews coming up on monday so we'll see how that goes but it's been a really fun project and um we have some really exciting, locally awesome, well-known people that are going to be... Mm. I don't want to spoil it, but they're, they're going to be coming on probably August or September. <clears throat> and I'm should really be, excited. Should be available soon where you get podcasts. Yep. So Wherever that might be. Wherever it might be. But, uh, all right. Cool. Mm-hmm. Um, 
what's uh what's up with us what's up with that what's up with you <laughs> um, you got eaten alive yesterday i did i've been <laughs> i've kind of taken on a summer job with with my dad who's a, a land surveyor um every time i tell people your dad's a surveyor they're like what he just like goes door to door and asks questions i'm like no 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 yeah it's no. kind of a interesting thing not a lot of people know what land surveying is but um so basically measuring property corners um boundaries. land parcels boundaries buildings elevations your um, mom just kidding if your mom's in the house they'll measure the house <laughs> but uh no, it's required. Uh, title companies need that information. I think it's to, to value property, value land. Mm -hmm. Also, just, I mean, just measuring everything, like from state lines to county lines to everything. The only thing they can't um, measure is your attitude. True. But, um... I'm going to sneeze and I'm, so, I'm going to move away. I'm sorry. Yeah. <coughs> Bless you. Thank you. I'm allergic um, to everything. You're allergic to me? I'm allergic to this earth. earth around me yeah, I get you um yeah so that's been interesting I, I don't necessarily like being away from my family I like to enjoy my summer break um but it's also been good to kind of spend time with my brother and my dad to get to know them and hear what's going on in their in their minds in their heads and their everything you know um so that's been kind of nice yeah my dad went on a rant yesterday about how awful the democratic candidates were oh good lord and you were stuck in the middle of nowhere that sounds like the shining no i just i i just listen i don't even say anything because i know it's did not he, did he like grab an axe and start yelling here's johnny and chasing you <laughs> no okay just want to make sure um but it's good i mean i like just listening to what whatever's going on in their minds and being with them you're I'm nicer also, than me i probably would have argued even though it's a pointless endeavor yeah it is pointless <laughs> um I've also learned a lot about surveying. We use GPS equipment. Mm -hmm. um, so can I, can I talk about that a little bit? Please do. Educate me because I'm going to interview All your right. dad at some point, you know. So there are, there is um, a setup process. So my brother Juan, he sets up, uh, there's two tripods. One tripod holds a radio receiver. And it's connected to the second tripod, which is holding a GPS receiver. Um, the GPS receiver is the base, so that point is known and it's set. You set a nail, and that's like it's it's a known point. It's called a CP, a control point. And a nail? It's a well. You set a nail because like a stake. That, well, just a nail. Weird. There's different types of points that you can set. Nails are pretty. Nails are there, but they're not like permanent. Uh -huh. The permanent points, like property corners. Those are usually rebars, like a quarter inch rebar. Interesting. And my dad has a cap, a little plastic cap that you put on top of the rebar that tells you his, his license number and his name. It tells you whoever whoever finds that cap next um, can tell who did the survey and what their license number is. That's really interesting. I had no idea it was this complex. Yeah. Um, and then once the tripods are set up, you have this, it's called a rover. It's basically another GPS receiver that's connected to a pole. And is that and, what we have to look at like the moon and stuff? No, that's different. That's a total station. Oh, okay. So that it has optics and it has lasers. Laser beams. <laughs> and that's a different method of serving sharks with the laser yeah. beams. Attached the G to the their heads. GPS is more, um, it's an easier process as long as there's not trees blocking the satellites from your GPS receiver. Oh. How do you deal with that in northern New Mexico where there's trees everywhere? So a lot of times you get lucky. If not, then you have to you have to do a bunch of stuff. It's kind of crazy, hmm. um, which I'm still kind of learning. But the the rover, this pole, has a computer connected to it called a it's called a data collector, and you use that to measure the points. And it basically measures it. it it's it's super accurate. Like GPS satellites are amazingly accurate. Um, and this equipment is insanely expensive too. It's like I don't know. My dad paid like forty grand for it or something like That's that. That's crazy. But it 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 pays for itself basically. Didn't your dad have somebody somebody stole a bunch of surveying equipment out of his truck one time? I think. 
I'm not sure. A couple years ago. And Maybe. it was like really intense because it was really expensive. I remember that. I don't know. I'll have to ask him about that. Yeah. So, the fact anyways. that they even knew what it was is kind of amazing. No, they probably didn't. They're like, this looks expensive. <laughs> no, usually usually they'll take it to a pawn shop and the pawn shop will be like, um, not sure what this is. <laughs> anyways, um, yeah, so I've been learning that. I've been hanging out with my, with my family. Um, but I also did a, we, we did a survey in, um, it's called Punta de Agua, Point of Water. It's uh, water point? next to a town called Tejique. Yeah. which is an, a Spanish land grant, which is the weirdest thing. Like, there's sections of New Mexico that are... It was It's land given to a group of people by the Spanish kingdom, <laughs> which is still honored today, which is... There's a couple of well, Spanish land Well, it was like the grants. conquistadors that came over here. It was given to them for their families, right? Like, yes. they were basically granted land from the mm-hmm. Spanish government yeah. or the, the monarchy in Spain. Mm-hmm. And I'm not hundreds sh- of years ago, and yeah. it's still honored. So there's, it's pretty interesting. There's a lot of history behind it, and people who live on the land grants are very protective of their property, and they're not allowed to sell it. Supposedly, makes sense. Um, my dad said that there had been a couple times when he he's been doing surveys, and he's been confronted with like people with guns and all this other stuff. Like, they're like, what do you crazy. want, homie? And he's like, whoa, just here to do the survey. Yeah, but, actually, um, I one time in high school, a friend of mine. Ryan, shout out Ryan, what's up? You're in Missouri, Springfield actually. Um, anyway, Ryan and I, like we used to go for random like drives because we'd just get bored and we'd be like, let's go like get coffee or something. Like let's go for like a random drive and see what we discover. And one time we got lost on a Spanish land grant and it was like nestled in between these two really big hills, like mountains almost, not big mountains, but like. You might've been in Tahike or Chilili. I, I don't know. It was kind of. Um, yeah, there's a town called Chilili. Yeah, I know. Um, but we got lost and it was crazy because there's one road in, one road out. Like you, you wouldn't know it was there unless you had a reason to be there. Mm-hmm. And we got some dirty ass looks. I think somebody threw rocks at the car even. And we were like, oh shit, we got to go. Like, yeah, it was no joke. So yeah, it's nuts. So anyways, I was in Punta de Agua. Um, and the terrain of this place. So New Mexico has diversity of terrain which is crazy but this is like halfway between desert and forest it was a forest actually it was it's a uh, juniper and pinon forest hold on yeah dogs no i thought i heard our daughter but no yeah. she sleeps in actually i know she's like her mom yep um quick side note women need more sleep than men i found that out no shit <sighs> hey it's a podcast. It's my podcast. I can say what I want. You have two podcasts. Let this be mine. I'm just kidding. Calm down. No, uh, so... Somebody's jealous. I'm not jealous. Mm-hmm. I don't really care. Um, but it's like a mixed forest, like p- pinon and, and juniper. So it's like these really, I don't know, at most 20 foot tall trees. Uh, cactus. Cacti. Cacti. Tomato, tomato. Um, potato, potato. Very, very, th- very thick, like, forest. It's but it's like wooded. a, it's like a desert forest, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's trees everywhere, but there are these very, very desert-resistant trees. Um, anyways, there's bugs mm-hmm. everywhere, and I didn't, I didn't have, uh, I didn't have bug spray. And when you're holding the rover, uh-huh. you have to, you have to keep it, it's called plumb. So basically where it's straight up and down. And to do that, you have to get this little bubble. It's like a level bubble. You have to keep the bubble inside the circle, and you have to be very still for at least like five to ten seconds at, at a time. As Some, the bugs are trying to murder you? Yeah, so bugs are eating me. I can't slap them off me. <laughs> bugs are eating me. Um, and that was that was pretty miserable. So Yeah, I think you need to invest in some really we, good bug so, spray. So I asked my dad on that on that one. I was like, Dad, do you have any bug sprays? like, yeah, I do. It's in the office. I'm like, oh, that doesn't help me. That does not help but me But we, no. we brought it the next time. But since that was like, I don't know, two weeks ago. My like, le- I will take the DEET cancer yes. over like the bugs eating me right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. So my legs are basically raw right now because I've been scratching them and it's yeah. nasty. And then yesterday we were in Tejeras, uh, which is the same kind of Tejeras area. is Spanish for scissors, yeah. in case you wanted to know. Well, it's a canyon that it goes from one canyon and it splits into two. So mm-hmm. it, it looks like scissors. Anyways, um, yeah, there's all these, all these, there's these stickers 
Um, I'm not sure if there are stickers a thing in other places. Yeah. Are, the, oh, are there shrieking? That's that's Riley. Uh oh. Um, Luke's probably pissing him off somehow. Luke, I know. Luke does a good job of pissing be, off his siblings. He's the he's the oldest. That's yeah. what the you should know this. Yeah. I mean, I know this. I used to antagonize my brother. That's why we're so yeah. close now. In Oregon, do they have stickers? Yeah. Really? Yes, they yeah. have stickers everywhere. Okay. So there's a lot of stickers, and they're just like attaching themselves to my shoes, and they're getting to into my butt? socks, not on my butt. Oh. Um, Riley is um, some for some reason he's crying and co- and, and, co- and putting his hand what over it? his mouth. And, and did this. Did you do something? No. Did he put something in his mouth? Maybe. Oh oh no, I wasn't watching. It. Should we parent you pause? <sighs> Let's pause, and we'll be right back. <sighs> Okay, we're back. So, why are you looking at your hands? I used to have really long fingers, and I feel like they don't look <laughs> as long as they used to. Yeah, you asked. That's okay. what. <laughs> like this hand looks strangely stubby to me. Yeah. Hmm. And I. I don't think so. I, maybe you're. Maybe maybe, maybe it's I, the angle. Maybe, maybe it's I the time, lighting. Maybe I time slipped into a different dimension where maybe I have you're somebody hands. else. Yeah. Oh. Um. Anyways, thank God for Storybots. They love that show. It's been a while and since it, I've seen it. Yeah, Riley loves it. Good. And um, I, w- I was watching it with them um, yesterday, and they were teaching the kids um, about uh, color spectrum. Oh. I, I shouldn't drink juice right now because it makes my 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 stomach upset. Okay. okay. You don't have to drink juice right now. Okay. I'm trying the video. He wants train videos. Okay, let me put a train video on as I talk. So, anyways, it's a it's a good show. Can you hold this for a second? Yeah. Mommy, put on the train video. Daddy's Mommy. working on it right now, sir. What do you say? I want some. I'm putting it on in the living room. Hey, Riley. Riley, do you remember last night when we were laying in your bed and you were like, don't ever leave me? Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's that on. was borderline creeper. Just gonna say it. It's on, buddy. Yeah, we were laying in his bed last night after story time, trying to get him to fall asleep, and he like looked me in the eye and was like, "Don't ever leave me." And I was like, "Whoa, nice. whoa, o- okay." Yeah. All right. So that's been my summer. Um, we are gearing up for a. I was just gonna go there. Me. Yeah. Um, I think we'll get into the nitty gritty after this oh, if okay. you want to. Okay. But uh, we're gearing up for a trip, which I'm excited about. It's it's a road trip. I feel like with our kids, we're gonna have to. This is gonna be, be prepared. <laughs> this is new territory for us. This is. I've been racking my brain all week. Okay, so we are driving to Denver for the Fourth of July, uh-huh. which is no biggie. We've done that before with the kids. Yeah. Um, and then after Denver, we have to drive through Utah, spend the night to Southern California. To Southern California, we're going to Palm Springs. We're gonna stop in Utah. I would have to figure that out. Yeah, and then... Um, I think it's an 18-hour drive, something like that, from Denver to Southern California, so we have to break it up into... Yeah. No, it's less... I don't know. Anyways. Doesn't matter. Anyway. Are you okay? Yes. Can you be okay? Yes. Go ahead. Are there bugs in your nose? Uh-huh. Oh. Um, so we're driving through Utah, going to Palm Springs, spending some time there. Palm Springs is my happy place. Lorenzo hates it, but... I don't hate it. I, I like Palm Springs, mm-hmm. but Palm Springs in the summer... As is, opposed to... Is, is tough. There's pools everywhere. I feel like if there's palm trees, I can deal with it. If there's a palm tree and a pool and possibly a margarita, I'm fine. Probably I probably won't drink margaritas, though. I'll probably just not drink anything because I don't want to be dehydrated. But... Palm Springs is my happy place for a lot of reasons. Um, 
I love the architecture. I'm kind of an old lady deep down in my soul. It's like a Hollywood spot. It's like a golden age of Hollywood um, vacation spot. So there's a lot of history there. It's always like the mid-century modern history that I like. Mm -hmm. They have fabulous tiki bars, and they also have the um, swim club and Ace Hotel. More specifically, the Amigo Room, which is my favorite bar on the planet, like on the entire planet. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, so I just really enjoy Palm Springs. My grandma and grandpa live in Banning, which is like a good 30 minutes outside Palm Mm -hmm. Springs. Um, and then if you want to go up into the mountains, you can do that too, which we did last time. So there's a lot to see. I just, I just checked the, um, the weather in Palm Springs, 42 Celsius. So that's, uh, about 107 Fahrenheit. Sweet. Um, but Palm Springs is cool. They have a mountain that's to the, uh, west of the city. And it's about 10,000 feet tall, kind of like the Sandias. Mm -hmm. And they also have a tram that goes to the top, which is kind of cool. Yeah, it's uh, Idlewild, California. And then there's a couple little mountain towns that are super Idlewild is a strange place. Idlewild is weird as shit. I think we've said that. Anyways, so... Um, So we're going to Palm Springs. And then on our way home, we're doing uh, Phoenix. Mom, I want different train videos. You want different train videos? Okay. If you don't stop coming out here, you're going to get no train videos. How do you like that threat, kid? So, yeah, we're going to be driving all over. We're going to be hitting, like, five states in a matter of, like, two weeks. And we are just have to, we have to prepare. Okay. And it's, it's like, how do you how do you prepare for a, a giant road trip with kids? And this is it's something... On. It's on the TV. That I think we have learned a lot about, but we'll test our knowledge yeah. this time. Yeah. And then after Palm Springs... Oh, Las Vegas. Uh, well, we well, La- Las Vegas is on the way. I don't know if we should stop there or not. Like maybe, maybe get an In-N-Out burger or something. I, I got um, food poisoning from In-N-Out in Las Vegas. Yeah. I'm not very fond of that. Yeah. Oh my God. It's okay. No, he's just going to be this kid today and you're going to go on your serving thing and I'm going to be here stuck with that kid. So Palm, Palm Springs is home. close to the ocean. I think that we, we were planning to like head to the beach or something well so here's the deal we were gonna go to legoland and stupid us we're like yeah kids let's go to legoland that'll yeah, be fun no big deal well like we like told them like we got them all hyped and then we were like the idiots we are this bird is super loud yeah shut up bird i see him nice. i see you <laughs> um, so i i went to the website and the legoland website just to look up tickets i was expecting maybe maybe 40 50 bucks a ticket it's like 110 per each. person. Yeah. Like, doesn't matter if you're a kid or an adult. Like, that's just the cost. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay. Um, I'm not Probably sure not if have... 600 bucks for a day is it's gonna be, it. or for at least like 550 bucks or whatever it is. Like, I mean, if, after you factor in like gas, going there, and meals and all and that meals fun and stuff. stuff. Yeah. Like, Holy shit, like that's. But like, shame on you, Legoland. Like, if you're supposed to be a family shame destination, shame on America. Shame on America. Shame on you, California. That, I mean, fa- that what boggles my mind is that families can afford that. I, I don't think know. they plan around it, and it's like their one big trip of the year kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, my friend was telling me they buy the little tiny, like, $1.99 packs of Legos. Mm-hmm. And then on the back, there's like a buy one, get one free into Legoland. Oh, seriously? That's what she told me. Um, I don't know if it's true. You'd have to go to, like, Target and look at the little Lego packs and see. But she's like, that's what we do. We just buy, like, the cheap-ass, like, little Lego packs, and then we use the code on the back. Mm. There's there's a par- there's a parenting hack for you. Cool. I mean, yeah. So if you're going to go to Legoland, maybe that's your ticket in. Oh, he's here again. Train video. No a more. Train video. No, I think we're going to turn it off because you keep coming out here, and you're starting to really get on my nerves, buddy. That's okay. <laughs> and you want. I'm just going to drink my coffee and pretend like this is not my life. You want that one? Mm. Here you go to watch this one. Mm. Hey, you get what you get and you don't throw mm. fit. That one? Mm-hmm. He wants the Russian train video. Of course he does, because he's a little communist. Okay. Riley, go, go watch your trains, dude. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so... Oh, parents? Uh-huh. I was just going to say... This is a great phrase. You can always tell your kids you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. And you start saying it when they're really little. It makes you feel better, but I'm not sure if it works for them. It works for Luke. Does it? Yeah, he. I started saying it when he was like two. 
and it's like stuck with him. Hmm. I should have started saying it with Riley probably yeah. right off the bat, but yeah, shame on me. We will find something to do in Southern California, though. I'm not afraid of that. Well, I, I, we told them, if nothing else, we'll go to the beach, and they were excited about that, so I'm down. Mm-hmm. Um, so once we're done with Southern California, we then head back to Albuquerque via I-10 through Phoenix, and then through the, I think it's Tonto National Forest in Arizona, Yeah. up through really pretty places in Arizona, up to I-40, back home. Um, yeah, so should be that's one thing i'm really excited about is like partially the drives yeah that part of arizona is really I mean, pretty i might want to kill myself at the end of it if the we'll, kids freak out we will but, be completely fine you know um i've never driven through utah i'm a ray of sunshine everyone when it comes to spending road trips with my kids it's fine we'll be okay <laughs> i'm gonna i'm i'm going to bring uh the cooler i'm gonna package does it does anybody with. have valium i can have maybe i'll just sleep through the whole thing I'm kidding. Oh, my gosh. I do have virtual reality goggles. Yes. And um, I'll give all the kids a tablet, and I'll give you the virtual reality goggles <laughs> and headphones. Can you get car sick if you're riding in a car whilst using virtual reality goggles? I mean, I don't know. I've never seen you get car sick, so. <laughs> no, but I mean, not me, but like people that are prone to that. I wonder if that would Maybe. like. Motion sickness. I'm not sure. Like, that would be so weird. Actually. It would be cool is like doing like a virtual reality where you're in okay. a car. While you're in a car? While you're in a car. So it'd be like dreaming about driving. I'm not sure. No, I did a virtual reality um, drop mm-hmm. from space. <laughs> with, my, with my virtual reality goggles? <laughs> it's so nerdy when you say it like that. I know. And I like got kind of like, I was like, whoa, this is really high up. <laughs> like, yeah. this is making me. And it was weird. It's that feeling like when you're falling, you know, or like when you're dreaming and you feel like you're falling. Mm-hmm. That It was totally that feeling. And I was just like, this is so Weird, yeah. Like. <laughs> uh, is it virtual? Do you know what's funny? I just had a very New Mexican thought. Which is what? I was like, well, I was just kind of thinking about planning, like getting snacks and stuff, putting them in the cooler. Ah la, let's um, bring some chili, eh? No, I was thinking like, I was like, maybe we should just pack some sandwiches. Well, I mean, maybe I could just do burritos or something. Of course you would. Or, I don't know, do, anyways. Would our kids be excited about burritos? They'd be like, I don't like this. Yeah, I don't know. Mine's broken. They probably would. It's going to be okay. I just want a tortilla, and then they dump all the rest of it out. No, oh, that'd be fine. Anyways, uh... A little hummingbird. Yeah. Sorry. Uh... <laughs> No, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. It's There's going to be some challenges, I'm sure, but it's going to be a fun little trip. And then what's crazy, too, is after that, we come home for a little bit, and then we're going to go back to Arizona with my parents. To Sedona. So to Sedona, which yeah. I'm excited about that, too. I'm I don't sure. really... I'm, I guess I'm trying to be excited. I just don't There's know a, anything about Sedona, so it's hard Sedona, to get So I've about. been doing some research on Sedona. And there's actually a ton of stuff to do cool. for kids. Cool. There's a train museum. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's My pops a, told me about that. There's a water slide, like a natural water slide. I want to do that, too. I heard the um, line for that is... I heard... No. Wait. My cousin, who lives in Phoenix, uh-huh. told me that those rocks are super slick. Mm-hmm. And she said, honestly, for little, little kids, it's kind of dangerous. Uh, but, like, maybe you and I should go. Oh, okay. And I would... I'm, I second that. Yeah. That'd be nice. Maybe we could take Luke, maybe. He'd probably be okay. Maybe. maybe Luke is pretty cautious about rocks and yeah, water. Yeah, maybe just you and me. I don't yeah, know. <laughs> we'll see. Um, there's a there's a bu- there's a a bunch of stuff to do as far as restaurants. There's some breweries. There's I don't know. I, mm-hmm. There's a wolf sanctuary. That'd be cool. Um, oh, <laughs> Lobo sanctuary. So there you have it. It's gonna be a good rest of the summer, hopefully. And you took a job. No. So okay, we won't talk about it. We'll talk about that later once oh, okay. things are more solidified. Nobody cares. Nobody listens to this. No, I mean like nobody that would know anything about that listens. Well, to this. I'm just not sure about about anything. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm still asleep just now. I'm still in education as far as I know, but <laughs> as far as I know. But yeah, what is nice? Thank you, Michelle Luan Grisham, and um, New Mexico lawmakers. What is nice is New Mexico teachers are getting a little bit of a pay bump next year. So that's, I like that's how people cool. are so quick to complain about her, like Republicans. My dad, my like, dad hates her. I'm like, dude, she's paying my husband's like paycheck, like, and it's a much needed pay raise for teachers. Yeah. Like, how can and you it's complain not, about that? In this and it's state? it's not all her, but it's like that group of lawmakers have made that decision under under her term. Right. Um, 
I would say so, take the credit. So New Mexico teachers are all getting a pay bump. <laughs> and then on top of that, I'm getting another pay bump because I just um, I just leveled up my license. I love it. <laughs> I don't know, that was level a up. up noise. Yeah. I, I, went, I, I, I don't even know what noise that Went up a level. It's, it's, it's legit. I went up a level. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a little bit of a pay bump there. So I'm, get, pictured, I'm getting a double pay bump next I year, which is cool. I just pictured you, like, you know how Fix-It Felix, like, on yeah. Wreck-It Ralph, like, mm-hmm. he holds a little hammer, and when he dies, then he comes back, and he's like, yeah. that's what it reminded me of. Cool. <laughs> You're so, like, shut up. No, that's fine. So, yeah, there's going to be some changes uh, in my professional life. Going to be challenged in some new areas moving on from science you work hard for the money possibly we'll so see what hard. happens there'll be so more details to follow um in aps uh information travels very slowly yeah what's up i work hard for the money yeah so hard for the money mm-hmm. so far so what is it so hard for it, honey i don't remember okay um all right what else is on your mind i don't know i'm looking at these apples Mm-hmm. How do you like those apples? Um, our apple tree is starting to mature, and the apples are getting ripe, and that makes me really happy for some, some of reason. Some are falling. Yeah, they are falling. It's only a matter of time before the kids come over to our house, like all the neighbor kids, and start chucking them at each other. Yeah, that's true. That's what happened last year. <laughs> but I can't blame them. I mean, You can make a pie. I know. I made an apple tartlet last year. This is riveting podcast material. And then right. one time I made a tartlet. <laughs> yep. Um, I did though. I was pretty proud of myself. All right, so you're like, okay, moving on. Let's get into the nitty gritty. I was trying, but you always shut me down. Oh, I'm sorry. How did I shut you down? You're supposed to say Mm -hmm. that apple tartlet was delicious. I hope you do that again this year. I really enjoyed it. I did actually like it. Well, thank you. And you didn't you put vanilla ice cream on it? I did, and it was good. Mm -hmm. I like the vanilla bean ice cream. (laughs) God. You know, you know the SNL <laughs> skit where they're talking about sweaty balls, but they're we've but they're talked like, about this on our on our podcast before. It does not, I know. Yeah. No, but it's the tone. It's like, oh yeah, that's those are some nice sweaty balls. Yeah, <laughs> I just really like. Is that a, a Anna Gasteyer? Anna Gasteyer and why can I not? Uh, she is so hilarious. Shannon? Anna Gasteyer, she's one of the she's one of the um, OG SNL yes, cast members. Yes, I love her. She's yep. she's. Freaking hilarious! I love. So she's in the uh, the NPR thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Anyways, it's 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 hard for me to describe SNL skits to people. Yeah, and it always just turns into like a very awkward situation. Like it's you're like not, it's hilarious, and they're like, uh, I don't know what you're talking yeah. about, and you're like, oh, okay. So, anyways, um, let's get into the nitty gritty if you want to. Okay. And we can disclose as much information as you like I don't or not. Want to get into like that nitty gritty? I just want to like. Well, um, one thing, one thing that I'm realizing is that, well, I've known this, I guess, but life, life can be hard. Life can be challenging. Wait, are you serious? Yes, I'm. Oh I'm my God. serious. No one had any idea. Well, if you let me finish. Ooh. Good grief. Hit a nerve. You have to like, anyways. Um, Just not everything has to be all like doom and gloom. All no, the it doesn't time. have to like, be. There could be g- good news and there could be growth. Somebody told me once, um, n- never, never waste a good crisis. That's depressing as hell. No, it's not. Like, don't waste a good crisis. In other it. words, grow from it. I get it. And if I told you who said that, you'd be like, oh, that's probably a good idea, because oh, you my. really admire that person. Um, I love when you speak for me. It's my favorite. Oh. Are we going to have another crisis? So, um, I don't know. Maybe we shouldn't. Go ahead. All right. If we, if we don't like this, we can cut it out. Um, all right. So. When have we ever edited anything? I guess we could if, if we wanted to. It's the, the option is there. All right. So, um, on the. Maybe two of the last five podcast episodes we've recorded ourselves maybe kind of awkwardly bickering with each other. Um, and we've decided to keep it, even though a couple times I'm like, maybe we shouldn't keep that. It feels um, like airing our dirty laundry on a podcast. Yeah. But then again, this podcast is really for us to kind of hash, hash some shit out. Yeah. So it's always that back and forth of, do we just leave it and let it be real or do we... What are we, you know? Yeah. What is this podcast? Like, I think that's what we ask. Mm-hmm. A lot of it's just fun for us. We just like 
create cr- creating. We like talking to each other most of the time, um, and we like having our stuff published and pod- and and out there. It's like a chronology of our married and parent yeah. life. So, so I don't know, but a couple of the podcasts like we've 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 expressed and like disclosed some of the problems that we have and like how we're dealing with it. And I still don't think we have everything solved. I don't think we'll ever um, have everything solved. No, we don't. things evolve. People but a lot evolve. of times, like, we are just not together. Mm-hmm. And... We approach and life very differently from each other. Yeah. And a lot of times there's a communication breakdown, and um, I don't feel like I'm heard. You don't feel like you're heard. It's just... It's and just, then it goes into fuck you mode. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty quick. And then it just implodes. So... So that being said, a um, couple of days ago, we uh, were sitting right where we're sitting right now, actually drinking coffee, mm-hmm. and we were actually having a, a we were having a very good conversation, just listening to each other. I think, and then we actually started talking about our trip. I think, mm-hmm. um, and this is before we knew we were going to California, right? Maybe mm-hmm. doesn't matter. Um, we were talking about planning, like what can we do to keep the kids uh, occupied. Um, what days should we leave, all this other stuff. Well, to, hold on. Mm-hmm. Part of it is that, like, going places with the kids really makes me anxious. Mm-hmm. Not, like, all the time, but, like, when the kids are crying or they're bickering or they're fighting and we're in the car for a long period of time, it makes me really anxious. Like, like my boiling point is, it's pretty prominent. Yeah. And so I'm really, I've been really stressing and, like, agonizing over ways to kind of temper down that anxiety for our trip Mm -hmm. and like lorenzo on the other hand like this does not stress him out and so we're i was trying to come up with it like kind of a game plan as to how i'm going to handle that because i know it's coming and and that's what kind of makes me anxious is like this is supposed to be a fun thing but on the side like looming there's this like the shit's gonna hit the fan at some point it's gonna make me feel like crap and this is why i don't want to travel with my kids Mm -hmm. and so that's where we were at. Yeah. And and I, I get that too. And I understand. And like, I just want, oh, well, what's that hummingbird doing? He looks drunk. Maybe he had too many apples. Dude, oh, he's trying, to, he's trying to catch a little bug. That's really cool. I've never seen that before. Yeah, he's like eating a bug. Sorry, like we're so distracted. No, no, this, no, he looked, I'm like, is he drunk? <laughs> he's just like <laughs> flying all over the place. But he's, he's Oh, buddy, he's, get a DD. He's catching a bug. Um, yeah, so I, I get that. And I want to support you in that. And then my and then the other side of the piece was financing the trip. Like yeah. we have to pay for gas, we have to pay for food. Which is funny how that out. kind of solved itself. But anyway. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> Weird. So that conversation went to uh, just everyday finances, mm-hmm. and which is a nerve for any couple, not just us. No. Like I, oh, absolutely. Anybody. I think er- uh, marriages end based on that. I know. I know for well, a fact. As they even say in like premarital counseling, which we didn't do, by the way. Mm-hmm. And I just side note. I would, I encourage that. Like if you're going to mm-hmm. get married or be in a long-term relationship with somebody where you are under the same household and the finances are shared, like get the premarital counseling. Um, because Lorenzo and I did it the hard way and we eloped. We didn't do any preparation for our marriage. We just like jumped We did in. the marriage crash course. Right. <laughs> right. We went to California, got married and we're like, Oh, we're married. We should figure this out. Yeah. Um, but the way you view money really has a lot to do with the way you were raised, like more so than I ever realized. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a clash. It's a culture clash because yeah. you're not the same person and you see money and your parents instilled different values about money. And yeah, it's just one of those things where like I'm you hap- start to realize. I'm like, happy I didn't marry like a Santa Fe neighborhood girl um, because. You don't want me to like draw on my eyebrows and get big old hoops or what? Are you making fun of New Mexico? Yeah, you want to go take a ride on my lowrider? Are you making fun of New Mexico right now? A little, now? a little. There's a stereotype for a reason. Mm-hmm. We could you, talk you, about Lake Oswego if you want. Go ahead. You mock me all the time about where I we grew up. We could talk with the... Never mind. Um, um, do you want to talk about how you call the food my parents make white people food? I don't say that. You have said that I to like me. the food that your parents make. You're like, oh, white people food? I like the food that your parents make. Mm-hmm. And I don't call it that. You just douse it in chili. So? <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. Let's, let's move on. All right. Um... Honestly, I do like the, the food that you're it's fine. And it's I do fine. like the food you make. I, okay. Um, it's pretty good for so, food. 
we uh, hit a boiling point talking about finances. And it basically snowballed exponentially into people saying, both of us, I'm saying people, us, um, melting down. I think both of us... There was door slamming, there was yelling, there was not nice things that were said. Lots of not nice things. Both of us are under these intense pressures. Like we, I, I think here's what, here's, I, I was thinking about this. Like when I have time alone, I rethink and I try to analyze and try to figure things out. Must be nice to have time alone. You did too. You were at the coffee shop. Yeah, that's I where was I driving. Have to go. That's where I have to go. I was driving. You were at the coffee shop. We, bo- we both had some time to think. Um, but I was analyzing and thinking about this and, and both of us have these little stressors Mm-hmm. And they there's about maybe a couple dozen of these little little stressors that are adding up, and then marriage, and then and then kids and everything else on top of it just kind of brings you to a point where you're at a constant edge. You're just hovering above this co- this hovering. You're hovering above the boundary line. You're you're hovering just just at the breaking point, and when you're there, and you're staying there for a long time, it's. It, it's 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 hard to maintain and then once once it breaks then it just breaks i always think of it as like a catapult or like a weight like hmm. you have all these little things that are balancing out right so you have like stress with kids so it goes down a little but then you have time with your spouse so it goes up a little bit it's, it's this constant balance sometimes though the stressful side gets so overweight that everything else just catapults out the window huh that's, that's a, just that's a, a good that's a good visual so we were there and we even got to the point where we're just like, our marriage is done um, again for the second time this summer. And it sounds it sounds petty to say it like that, like that we would just throw throw around that idea over and over again. But I think we've been swimming in these stressors for a couple of months. And so it's, I mean, at the time when you're when you're very stressed out, it's like, I think your fight or flight kicks in too. And it's just easier to be like, hands in the air, like, F it, I'm done. I'm Mm -hmm. out. Um, You know, and like, and I'll admit this, I was so angry that I went on the internet and I found separation papers for the state of New Mexico and I filled them out. Um, I didn't pay for them to be published or filed, but I was like, you know, give me one good reason. Like, give me Mm -hmm. a reason to not. Um, And then I kind of like came down from my anger and the adrenaline and I was like, okay, um, I'm going to take a minute. I'm going to go to a coffee shop. I'm going to sit down. I just need to breathe for a second and like really just not be around anything that's stressing me out right now. And there it is. Mm -hmm. Speaking of. They're fine. um, And so I went to a coffee shop and I sat there for like probably a good two hours almost. Ate a breakfast burrito. Yeah. Which are pretty decent actually. I liked it. They were from Duran's next door. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Anyway. Um, good Lord. <laughs> Sorry. But, but like I was at that point where I was like, you know, we'll do 50, 50 custody. I can make this work. I've got to find a job. So that's mm-hmm. step two. Um, I'll do this. We can alternate holidays. Like we're going to have to, expl- like, I was thinking about all the steps necessary mm-hmm. to just like be done because I, w- I really was done in that, in that moment. Mm-hmm. And it's really easy to, to think about that when you're angry and when your adrenaline's high and when words have been flying and people are slamming doors and they're in your face yelling and you're just like, yeah, you've hit that boiling point and it's not the first time. Mm-hmm. I think it's easier the second or third time that you've hit that point to be like, okay, yeah, like F this, I'm done. Here's, here's what I realized though during that last episode. Mm-hmm. I was actually pretty okay with everything that you were doing. I was like, all right, I'm done. Like, and, and that, that surprised me because mm-hmm. I'm usually the fighter. I'm like, no, this is like, I... I'm not okay with you um, wanting to, like, not be with me. I'm not okay with, like, the idea of being apart. Like, I'm just not okay, and I'm going to fight no matter what because, I mean, I don't know I don't know, I don't know, know what the because is. I just, that's who I am. Mm-hmm. But this time around, I was like, all right, I'm kind of cool with this. Yeah. And I was pretty calm about it. Like, I didn't really care, and I, and I just kind of let it play out. Mm-hmm. But um, I forgot what I, where I was going with that. But that, that's just how I felt at that moment. I'm not sure what I was going to say. I think the conclusion that I came to when I was sitting at the coffee shop, like on the patio, just alone, kind of like marinating mm-hmm. in my own thoughts was that it takes, I mean, we've been married for 10 years. 
none of those years have been easy. There has not been one year that has been easier than the other. It just is different types there's of also, stress yeah, there's, and change. Yeah. There's, um, <laughs> even before kids, I, th- okay. So if I were to say the, easy- our first major fight was over money before kids, we were in Missouri. I don't know if you remember that, but it was in Missouri. Missouri was hard. We, I was working part-time at Starbucks and you were working part-time at a little orphanage. It's not an orphanage. Or what it's not, that's not a PC word anymore. Um, it's not a PC it, word? No. It's in Batman. It was uh, a, Lego Batman. That's because it's Lego Batman. Oh, we, my God. I watched that with the kids last night. It was really funny. <sighs> it's It was a tr- youth transitional home. It doesn't matter. Okay. Anyway. I didn't know orphanage was not PC. I'm sorry. It implies that uh, It implies that you're not wanted. Does it? Or that you're, you're like socially discarded. Hmm. Anyway. That's why they call it like a youth transition home or community facility. Or what about a, like, did, are there still Catholic facilities, mm-hmm. but they don't call them orphanages? It'd be like they don't children, call them children's home. They don't call them orphans? No, children's home, home for displaced youth. Okay. There's different names. I mean, they mean the same thing, but they're just nicer okay. sounding. Um, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that was, I mean, Missouri was hard. Um, we made it through. Mm-hmm. We came back, lived uh, with your parents for a bit, made made it through that. But then we lived, we lived on Truman. I think Truman... I didn't get to finish oh, my thought. Oh, I'm sorry. Thought. Okay, go ahead. Can I finish? Mm-hmm. Part of what I was thinking when I was sitting there was that it's taken 10 years to build something. Mm-hmm. And it, if it can take one day or two days or even a week to tear that down, like either A, maybe we need to figure out like what we're building with. Or, like, I'm a very metaphoric thinker, so bear with me. Or B, like, maybe we need to see where, like, we're weak. Like, see where what we've built is weak. Mm -hmm. You know, and work on that. So, you know, it shouldn't take one or two big blow-ups to destroy everything you've built. If it's really something of value. Yeah. Anyway. And I think that you can look through your past in different lenses, too. Like, you could... You could convince yourself whatever the last 10 years might be. Or you can you can kind of focus on just like the downs. And you can say like, man, the last 10 years have been a waste of my life. I can't continue on with the next 10 years. And like uh, totally avoid all of the other like good things. Mm-hmm. Or, you can be, or you can have... Um, or you can make excuses on the other side and say like, look, these are all the good things and ignore the bad things, I guess. But I don't know. I think what we have is valuable. Um, We have a lot of experience. I don't know what I'm trying to say. (laughs) You wanted to get into the nitty gritty, so you tell me. Yeah. Hmm. You had a thought and it trailed. It did trail. I'm just lost. So basically, the end the end game here for us is that we decided obviously something needs to change. Mm-hmm. Some things need to change. Yeah, and we we are going to get mentorship from an older couple that goes to our church. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be people from church. Calm well, down, I'm, like that's not the well, solution not, for everybody. I'm not calm. I'm not not I, calm. That, I wasn't talking to you. Oh, no, that, that's that's fine. Like I, I think that I think that religious communities can offer a lot of support for whatever what I'm, community you're a part of. Mm-hmm. What I was trying to say uh-huh. is that you can find mentorship in a lot of different places. It doesn't have to be at a church. It can be just an older couple or a couple that's been married longer than you that has some insight. Right. Because believe it or not, pretty much everybody has dealt with this shit at some point in their marriage. It's not like you're the only one. You know, you're you're not the only ones that have mm-hmm. had like a tumultuous situation happen in your marriage. Right. I and know it, people that have been married and had way worse things happen. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But it's how you choose to to either disconnect or to go forward, and what kind of people you surround yourself with to to do that with you. Right. So. And it's hard to do that with parents too, because your parents. It's I a mean, biased relationship. You I, can't do it with your parents. Yeah, and I realize that. Our parents, both my parents and your parents, have gone through their own trying things, um, and they would they would have a lot of valuable things to say to us. But it's it's hard to 
it, 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 that communication is it's just hard. It can't be your parents. Well, those re- relationships too, like there there may be some personal things that they would have to reconcile and be pretty vulnerable about right. that they might not be willing to with their own child. That might be a whole new co- counseling session, like. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, like I have, I have some things with my parents and I know you have some things with your parents mm-hmm. and that would be really hard. Yeah. So I'm, I'm glad I'm, I'm looking forward to this mentorship, mm-hmm. uh, relationship. Um, and, uh, I'm looking forward to growing with you. Um, I'm looking forward to being more of a functional family, mm-hmm. <laughs> a yeah. functional marriage, um, and to have good experiences and I, I, I also don't want to look forward to when the kids are going to be gone. Yeah. And I want to, I want to enjoy my experiences now and not – because that, that's one thing that I have noticed about us is that we're like right around the corner. There's better times ahead. Like <sighs> we're going to have more money. We're going to have a better house. We're going to have uh, – maybe we'll move. And now one of those things around the corner is like – when the kids are older, when the kids are older, we'll get to do this. When the kids are older, like the dynamic I, just changes. Yeah, I I want to, I want to enjoy my two sons and my daughter now. You know, something even though that it's hard, has made it a little easier for me in that respect. Is like, I used to get really bent out of shape about having to lay down with them at night to put them to bed mm-hmm. all like every single night. I'm like, oh my gosh, just go to sleep. The thing is, they're not going to be like this forever, and there's going to be a time when they're going to go in their own room and shut the door, and they're not going to want me around them at all. Yeah, they're not going to want you in there. And yeah. so it's actually really sweet that they want me in there right now. Yeah. I'm starting to, like, kind of value that time more. And, like, even, like, the other day, like, Juliet, like, I wanted to snuggle her because she's three. Like, she's already three. I know. She's and she's so girl. little. but And I keep – I sometimes I catch myself treating her like a baby still because she is the baby. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, God, she's three years old. Like, and I'm like, come here, let me hold you. And she's like, no. And I'm just like, oh, yeah. oh, it's gone. Like, you yeah. know. And it's weird because I never thought I would miss that. Like in the moments where like they're little and you're like, I have to hold you all the time. Like it yeah. gets old. But at the same time, there's a minute where I miss having that baby like in the carrier that just like wants to snuggle and like sleep on me. Mm-hmm. Like I miss that because I don't have it anymore. We won't have it ever again. Like my friend just had a baby and I was at her house the other day and I'm like, give me that baby. Let me hold it. Give me that baby. And she's like, seriously? And I could tell she's in that mode where she's like, I wish this baby wasn't on me all the time, but it is what it is. Yeah. And I'm like, give me your baby now. <laughs> like, <laughs> Let me hold your baby. Yeah. And no, I don't want any more kids, but. We well, can't unless it's somebody else. <sighs> no. That's TMI. Like, that's not even the point of this conversation. I know. We you always have to remind me that I made you get a vasectomy. No, you didn't. I, I, I'm I, an adult. I can do whatever the heck I want. Also, yeah, thanks like, for disclosing everything. Lorenzo got a vasectomy. Oh, dear Lord. I sat in through the whole thing. Yep. That's another podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I could do a whole podcast on that. I could. I watched the entire process. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I agree. You know what also is the cutest thing, too? Hmm. I, I I like being called dad, mm-hmm. and and Juliet calls me dad, and she calls me daddy sometimes yeah. too, and that's like, it's the sweetest thing. Like I'm I'm, like it I I matter to this person, which is really cool. You're like the coolest person they know. Have you ever thought about that? Yeah. At some point, you're gonna be the lamest person they know. Yeah, and and <laughs> then right for now. a little bit, and then <laughs> you're the coolest person yeah. they know. I I I I val- I'm a person of value to three to three humans at least three humans. Mm-hmm. Maybe to four if we include you, if I am valuable to you. Would you stop? But uh, guys, this is what I mean by the guilt. It's like no a su- guilt. yes. Oh my gosh! So, really? No, but let me just let passive me just, aggressive let comments me just like that. Okay. So, but that that just makes me makes me feel good. I guess. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, it's something that we've built mm-hmm. together. And we'll, we'll figure Three somethings that are now getting really old. We'll figure it out. I, I, I hope I learned something from our recent blow-ups over the summer. Mm-hmm. I hope we don't kill um, each other on our road trip. Yeah. <laughs> one thing that I want to... Uh, that, okay, so here's, here's one thing I'm working on over the summer. And it's like the word that I'm focusing on and like meditating on mm-hmm. is contentment. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be so content that I'm stagnant. Right. But I also don't want to worry about the petty little things that I've been worrying about. Um, so I'll just be upfront with you. I, a lot of times I'm not content with my phone. 
I know we've had this conversation we on have. the podcast many times. I know. And I don't and, understand it. But and you it's don't want to hear it. I know, but you. I am going to, I'm going to make you hear. Okay. Excuse me. Mm-hmm. Don't speak for me. You do that all the time. Don't speak for me. I didn't say that. Your body language says something also. No, I'm just saying we've talked about it on the podcast. People have the background. They know. It's on there. I'm going to say it anyway. That's fine. Go ahead. I'm not saying you shouldn't. Just don't speak for me because I didn't say anything. Okay. So contentment. Mm-hmm. I have, I, I focus a lot on, and it's, it's, it's dumb. I know like nobody has to tell me that's dumb because I know it's dumb is, is getting a different phone in particular. I want an iPhone. Um, for a couple of different reasons, I, I I feel like, and these are these are so like, these are dumb thoughts. That's why I'm trying to get rid of them over the summer. Um, I want uh, the security of the iPhone. I want iMessage. I want all this other stuff. And I went from an iPhone to to a Pixel. How do you know that that's just not stuff that's been fed to you? It has been, and I realize that. So reject it. I and I and, and that's no. that's the thing. Like. I've been working on. I've been doing really good, actually, like with my thoughts. But over the summer, I just have this like kind of slow burn of a of a of a feeling uh, that I that I want to get an iPhone, and I'll go to the websites. I'll look for I'll look for deals and specials, and I've almost even pulled pulled the trigger a couple of times. But I know it's not the right thing because iPhones are expensive. They're like a thousand bucks. If you want to trade um, me phones, we can trade phones. I so that's the thing. I don't. We can. It doesn't matter to me. I don't want to trade. I'm fine, and I and I want to be fine. Like my phone is good, my phone works fine. I have a Pixel, a Google Pixel, and it's like, it's an amazing phone. It, but I mean, I'm still paying on it. But like, it's it's an amazing phone, and that's one stupid little thing that I that I've been thinking about over the summer, and it, it's stupid and it, and it's in, insignificant, but the way that it's affecting me is significant. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. And I'm like when I go for runs, that's one thing I'm I'm always thinking about is contentment. Contentment, you're fine. Um, the other thing is is I have this idea that like I need to make more money because I need us to go to breweries more. I need us so we can be fatter and more out of shape. I need us to be able to every time buy wanna, more stuff. Like every time I want to drink a bunch of beer, I'm like that's just gonna make you fat. I need. <laughs> I need to buy more stuff. I need I need Lindsay to go shopping more. Um, I just have this idea that I'm not making enough money, and I need to make more money, and I need to find a job. Like it doesn't matter if I'm happy or not. Like I just need to find a job that makes more money, and I've been chasing that for a long time. Like That's since we've been lie, married, though. That's just I've been a lie. and I've been Society chasing it and chasing it and chasing it. Value and you, that's yeah. nothing to do with intrinsic value. Nothing. Yeah. And here I am. I'm a teacher. Like I, ch- I chose this career path. I'm a teacher. Like what did I expect? Um, but that, that there's that that slow burn of like a bit of anxiety that I just don't make enough money and I I don't have a I don't have a house that we're buying. We're renting right now. Like which is fine. No, I know it's fine. And I and like I I want to be able to be more happy in the moment. I, um, can I say something? Yeah. I can remember the flip side of, of not renting. I can remember the flip side of us having a house and being like, I wish that if something broke, we didn't have to go shell out a bunch of money. We don't have to fix it. Yeah. Like there is, there's ups and downs to both. Like I remember being on the other side. Like you can't forget about where yeah. you came from. I agree. I mean, I, I liked owning our house, but it's just, that's a conversation for another time, I guess. But like not even just the renting piece. It's just, I don't know. It's because you feel, I think, and I could be wrong, I think that there is, in your mind, when it comes to congruency with success, you see renting as a failure. I'm or not, like, not like you. it's not the definition of like no. success, maybe. I don't know. No, that's wrong. Okay. Um, well, I, don't like, I don't like renting because I, it's, it's, not, it's not mine. I don't have, I don't have the creative uh, freedom to paint a wall if I wanted to paint a wall. Um, um, newsflash, our children mm-hmm. have destroyed the walls, so you can paint them if you want. We're not getting our damage deposit back. I don't have the 
I don't have the creative freedom to like buy a new fridge if I wanted to buy a new fridge or whatever. Like, but somebody else would buy a new fridge for you if it broke because that's their job. No, I, I get that. Like, I get that. There's there's ups and downs to both. But I'm not. That's not even what I'm talking okay. about. All right, let's move on. Um, I think we still have some work in our marriage to do. Mm-hmm. There's communication breakdowns, like. I, there's there's times when I don't feel like I'm being heard and like you this... are being heard. There's also times where I feel like you're beating a dead horse and you need to let it go because it's not healthy to hang on to it. I think we're both on that level where that's something we need to work out and that's something we can work out in counseling. We don't need to do it here. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. I don't think we need the world to see how dysfunctional we are. All the time. Now you're mad. No, I'm not. Okay. Go ahead. No, that's all I had to say. I'm being honest with what I'm working on. Okay. And it doesn't matter if it, like the renting or the buying thing. That's not even the point. Okay, what's the um, point then? That I'm working on these things. Okay. Point received. I hear you. So, anyways, what are you listening to? Uh, I don't know. I'm listening to a lot of really random things right now, and none of which I can get to because we're recording on my phone. Um, so. I'm dealing with some weird stuff right now. Okay. And I know that you probably don't understand this. Don't speak for me. (laughs) Um... My biological aunt passed away last week. Mm-hmm. And I didn't get to know her well. I um, spoke with her on the phone once, probably a couple months ago. And she had a brain tumor and they did chemo and they tried everything and it, it just didn't work. And so she she passed away, surrounded by, by family, which is good, in Oregon. And um, I'm feeling really sad about that. And I've been kind of grieving that in a lot of different ways in the last week. Um, and so to, you know, instead of like, what are you listening to? What I've been thinking about Mm -hmm. is relationships and how they're fragile and Mm -hmm. how like you really need to pick and choose the things and people that you allow into your life and the things that matter. And I regret, I think our daughter's awake. I regret not going up and seeing her in Oregon when I had the chance. Because we were there, right? Yeah. And I wasn't obligated. I mean, I didn't have a relationship with this person, like, my entire life. But the thing is, I don't think that she... I think had she had the ability to, she would have. Mm -hmm. And I feel terrible about that. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of guilt and sadness for a relationship that I wish I could have had. Hmm. That I didn't. And part of it's my fault. For not. And so... I've been a little edgy lately. Mm -hmm. Because I've been really dealing with what that means. And it's hard. Um, Just to kind of like recap on this. I know I talked about it a while ago. But I I took a DNA test last summer. It's been about a year. Found out my... The dad that raised me is not my biological father he's still my dad of course but that has introduced a whole new slew of relationships and things and complexities that I don't fully understand yet and emotionally I'm still trying to wrap my head around so this aunt was my biological father's sister um and we actually looked a lot alike which is funny and have a very similar personality so I don't know. It's just one of those things where I am also a little angry because I feel like I was never given the opportunity to have that relationship. Hmm. And the only opportunity I had, I didn't take advantage of. So I've been dealing with a lot of guilt and a lot of anger and just kind of sadness and feelings. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know where I was going with that, but I just kind of like, that's what's been going on with me lately. So when you say you've been thinking about these things, like that's what I've been thinking about a lot. Yeah. And it's, I think I've been trying to keep myself really distracted too 
from yeah. having to sit there and sort it out. I want us to be able to support each other. Like, I want to be able to support you in that struggle. Like, I want to listen to you and hear you. And if I tell you that I'm having anxiety over an iPhone, like, even though it sounds really dumb to you, I want that to be heard. Yeah, I know. Because it's a big part of what struggle I'm having. I want us to support each other in that. Like, I want to support you in your... Like, you have a lot of complex... It's a fucking iPhone, dude. It's not a person. It's not a human. It, it can't love you back. I guess that's why it's hard for me to understand. So, so, but the but the focus is not the iPhone. The focus is me. Yeah, I know. I know. Hear me. And I want to hear you. I know you have a lot of complex feelings. I'm not, I'm not equating a human life to, to an iPhone. Or a daughter's I'm not, awake. That's fine. We're almost done. I'm not equating those two things. But I do want to be able to support you. And I don't... I want to... I just want to hear what you have to say. And I want to, like... Not even just give you advice. I just want to listen. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because I know that you've had a lot of... Like, the last year has been difficult. I mean, understatement. But, like, it's been difficult. It's been confusing as fuck. <laughs> yeah. I mean, fa- family um, relationships have changed. Uh, and on top of that, you're raising three humans. Like, and you're, mar- and, you're, and you're trying to balance your relationship with me. There's a lot. There's a lot happening. Yeah. So, I get it. So, that's one, maybe that's one thing we can work on. Yeah. All right. Um... I'm sorry. Did, did did I cut you off? No. I'm just worried about our daughter because she's crying in there, and I, I'm thinking about all the things they have to do today. So. Okay. Well, let's wrap up. So, um, I'm not listening to really. I mean, I'm yes. Um, yep. Take that in there. Remember the rule. Oh yeah. Um, in, a minute. in a minute. Go. Go. Okay, we didn't say no. We said in a minute. Why don't you go, um, go, go, uh, go. Do me a favor and, and go to Juliet's room and tell her that we're going to be there in just one second. We're trying to wrap up, buddy. Go okay. tell Juliet. Go. Uh, so, um, I'm not li- really, I'm, I'm listening to music, but I'm just basically listening to whatever Google tells me I should listen to. I use YouTube music and they have their, like, um, they have their, uh, like, artificial intelligence. So, like, yeah. when I press play right now, it's Glass Animals, The Neighborhood, Head in the Heart, More Glass Animals, All J. Like, it's just all the same stuff. And one out, one artist that they're starting to make me listen <laughs> not make me. Arctic Monkeys. Arctic Monkeys. And I'm, I'm not, not a fan. I'm not a huge fan either, but it's, like, there. And I'll listen to it sometimes. But it's, it's because just, the algorithm, algorithm says if you like yeah. a lot of those, then so, you will like that. Yeah, Lumineers. Like, I'm just listening to whatever the algorithm is telling me. Yeah. Anyway, so I want to find new albums. I want to find new music, and I'm trying to branch out a bit more. Um, yesterday, I put on um, Kendrick Lamar's Damn, mm-hmm. which I, I do enjoy, but it's I, I can't listen to it when it's around, when, when kids are around, really, because it's, it's a bit... It's a bit not for kids, but I do like, I do like Kendrick Lamar and I'm trying to branch out to more music. That's just not just like, um, upper middle class, middle class, uh, white thirties, which is my demographic, I guess, even though it's not, even though I'm kind of like, whatever, I'm, I'm rambling, but, um, podcasts right now, um, I'm not really listening to any podcasts either. Uh, except for sometimes I'll throw on the Bad Christian podcast because I, I don't know, I, uh, it's just my go-to, um, Bad Christian podcasts, but books I'm listening to, I'm listening to, um, Children of Blood and Bone, um, and it's, a it's, it's fiction and it's like fantasy, but it's, uh, a different type of fantasy. Um, it's not like Lord of the Rings fantasy, it's. It's like African fantasy, which is interesting. Um, so it sounds like I'm, an HBO special. Yeah, I'm only like an hour into it, but uh, it's it's interesting. So, cool. you know, listen to any podcasts or anything? I, not specifically. I mean, I've been using Podcoin, 
mm-hmm. which is a hosting platform. And you listen, I mean, I've been listening to the regular podcasts like True Crime Garage, but I've been doing it on PodCoin because basically you just listen to whatever you listen to anyway. But if you log so many minutes, like every, it's like every 10 minutes you log, you get a point. And then those points can be redeemed for like gift cards and stuff like Starbucks or whatever. So mm. I was like, well, if I'm listening to podcasts anyway, like I should just redeem these points and like get something out of it. So being the freedom seeker that I am and liking free stuff, um, I've been using PodCoin and just listening to the podcast I normally do, but just via that platform so I can mm. get credit for it and then I can go get coffee for free. Nice. Nice. Well, that's cool. Yeah. There's a lot of ways to do little side hustles on the internet, which is nice. Well, I mean, if you're, I figured like if I'm doing something I'm already doing, because mm-hmm. I would be doing it either way, I might as well like, yeah, you know, put it towards something. Yeah. Because <laughs> time is valuable too. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, um, we're still not there where we need to be in our marriage, obviously. Like we bickered on this podcast too. I'm wrapping uh-huh. it up. I'm wrapping it up. Uh, but hopefully there'll be more growth. Um. Maybe this trip will help us to grow. Or maybe as we'll a family. kill each other. Maybe. I might disappear and be buried in the desert somewhere. You never know. Or the other way around. <laughs> like really, I think it'd be you that does violence to me. Wow. I'm just kidding. God. See, we don't even know when the other one's kidding. So it's so you, bad. you kid you kidded about I have a dark sense of humor. Me doing violence and then when I kid about you about Doing you doing, violence? Me doing violent things? Whatever. Doing, doing violence. violence. Hey, stop making fun of New Mexico, please. Come on, man. You live here. You have a Zia tattoo. Like I know. Take it easy. That's why I feel like it's okay. I've committed. <laughs> Calm down. All right. Um, so podcasts will show up maybe in the future from different states. Maybe we could do little snippets here and there. Yeah. Uh, maybe we can record the chaos in our car and then just post it. And then you can have pity on us. We have a podcast from Palm Springs like two years ago. If yeah. you're interested, it's in the in the archives. It's in the archives. Somewhere. You have to go to our, our blog spot to find yeah. it though, because for whatever reason, iTunes, Apple <laughs> iTunes only only posts the last twenty five episodes, and we're on like episode one hundred and four or something. I don't even know. But uh, but we went to Palm Springs like two years yeah. ago without kids, and we did a we did an episode grandparents kind of thing there. We did it on grandparents. Yes, we did. So anyway, so there you have it. Um, You guys have a good rest of your week. Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday.